How you doing? I'm all right, man. Got back from a few days in Florida. Oh yeah? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. You 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 tanning tanning down there? What's that? You getting working on the tan? Nah, there's a group down there that wanted to kind of like do some fucking sales stuff, you know, trying to get us out there with the CMR so they were filming some videos and stuff. We were just having some fun filming some videos. Nice. You're basically doing a lot of trading porn videos. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> I think your mic, you need to get that mic uh, repositioned there. Okay. How's that? That's way better. Um, yeah, I had, I had two weeks off the market. Kind of forgot there's actually a world going on out there with with all sorts of things happening. Amazing, isn't it? I know. People don't, not everyone's looking at the price of like the S&P 500 every day. God who, bless them. Who would have thought it? Huh? God bless them. I wish I was in that world. All right. Um, yeah. So, uh, so you're down in Florida doing a bit of trading porn. Um, uh, what else has been going on in it? Are you in any trade? Got one long grain trade on. That's I'm funny. Like, you should say that. Cause I saw Peter Brandt tweeted you and was like, Hey, uh, what was this? Soy, soybeans. Yeah, I mean, I'm doing soy meal, but I'm really... Soy meal. I got to wait until Friday when the Wazda report comes out to really get any kind of real position on. But I put some on just in case it runs away from me, but... Oh, yeah. I can't really do the real thing until Friday. Yeah, the Wazda report. It's like my first real trade of the fucking entire year. Oh, yes, this is the first one. Nice. Yes. Nice. Break that cherry, man. Yeah, right. <laughs> get the feet wet. An unbelievable dry period for me, but, but I didn't lose any money. No, well, well, better dry than drowning, eh? That's a fact. That is a fact. What are we gonna do with this economy? It's 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 white hot, man. It's not. I feel like there's nothing to do when it's this hot. <laughs> Just look. Let me at ask you something. Let me ask you something. Okay. <laughs> Let's say for a second. That there was a real number that we knew where interest rates should be, given everything, right? So there, there's a number. Interest rates should be here because whatever. GDP, CPI, employment is here, right? Right. So interest rates should be here. Right. And what about that number was a lot higher than where interest rates actually are? So interest rates should okay. be 6%. Yeah. They're actually at four percent. Yeah. So interest rates are too low relative to where they should be. Right. What would happen? Uh markets would go off, equities would go off, bonds up, gold up. Well, maybe not gold up. Well, yes, gold up. Bonds. Yes, gold up. VIX up. Yeah, but yeah, Bitcoin. not low. Bitcoin probably down. Why down? Uh, it's, to me, if interest scenario, rates you're gonna, be, because, because you're going to be dollar up, you're going to yeah. be dollar up. So Bitcoin is going to be under a bit of a cost, right? I mean, are you are you going to tell me that Bitcoin is a is a risk trade? Yes, I'm going to tell you that Bitcoin is a risk trade. If interest rates should be at six and they are in fact at four, right? Hold on a second. That... Hold on a second. Every time there's a risk event, Bitcoin does nothing. Forget if it's a risk trade. It's an asset. A risk off trade. That, benef yeah. that, that benefits. It's an asset that benefits from, just like all assets, from more money going into it than coming out of it. Right? Let's come back to the Bitcoin trade another time. Right. Anyway, equities down. Bonds e up. Equities gold up. up. Equities up. Everything up, dude. If Everything up. Should, if, every, if interest trades should be at six, but are in fact at four, then every asset on the planet is going to go up for the most part. Okay. Because it means you're gonna people are gonna borrow shitloads of money. A fourth of it goes to six. Yes, and and every money's just gonna pour in, and, and everything is gonna go up. Gotcha. So now let's look at what's been happening. 
stocks all time highs, and it's not just seven stocks. S and P, Dow, Nasdaq, Dax, Nikkei, India, right? All time highs. Gold, all time highs. Bitcoin, all time highs, right? Mm -hmm. So to me, that to me that's the story. To me, that's the story. I think interest rates really need to be a lot higher. And not only they're not going higher, people continue to talk about how they're going lower. I, I don't know where they're even getting that idea from. If you went, well, to, sleep, if you well, went to sleep five years ago, woke up today, and looked at the last six months of economic data on growth, on employment, and on oh yeah, you'd be like, why? You be, you'd be talking about where they're raising rates and how much they're raising rates. That's all right. you're talking about, right? And right. all anybody's talking about is where they're cutting rates. It, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. So, it's, to me, yeah. To me, everyone, you know, there's, there's talk out there like, oh, you know, something's got to break and then the Fed will cut rates, right? Well, ho hold on. on, on so, I mean, where, why am I going wrong saying, you know, if, if rates are at four and, they're, and they should be at six? I want to talk about why, I'm, why I've got that all, you know, back to front there thinking, well, equities are going to go down a certain amount. Am I thinking there? And I want to I want to get my head in the right space here. I mean, two weeks off the market has got me. I didn't realize my head was going to be up my ass. But would the markets not think shit? Rates are rates are good. Interest rates are going to be going higher, so we need to price that in. To the if downside. they were saying interest rates were going to go higher, that'd be a different thing. But that's not what they're saying. Well, if you're saying that it it would be known, what if it's known that they're going to six? That's a different story. Oh, well, that's what I thought. That's what we were talking about. No, what I'm saying is they should, in the okay. world of fantasy, be at six, but actually are at four. And nobody is yeah. recognizing that they should be at six. Or, you know what I mean? Right. And, okay. In other, words, in other words, it just creates. Like, yeah. Powell, yeah. Like, it's not like Powell is saying they should be at six. Or, no, he's not. You know, no. where someone, uh, like a. Or anyone you know, for that wait, matter. Yeah, anyone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, so yeah. It just creates liquidity, man. You know what I mean? If yeah, I yeah, yeah. Earn six, and you're going to lend me money at four. I'm going to bend and borrow as much money at four as freaking possible from you. Absolutely, six, right? absolutely, man. To me, that's exactly what's going on here, right? But and, so I was. And instead of breaking the Fed, they love people love to say, "Oh, the market's going to break the Fed, right?" And force yeah. them to lower rates. I think they're going to break the Fed the other way. I think they're going to break the Fed to make them raise rates. If we I talked to, about, we I talked to about this, meeting and the S and P's at sixty five hundred, or make up some number, right? Are you this guy that they're going to cut rates? There's a guy. There's a guy who works for Apollo. He's a head economist for Apollo Academy Research. I really like their research. The data spark. It's really good. It's really lightweight. And he came out there last Friday, and he's just like, the, "They're not. They're not going to cut rates at all in 24." And I think uh, I believe it, man. Everything's fucking running on you know, twelve cylinders here, in terms of the economy. And, I think uh, I think they're gonna raise them, dude. That's my call. Yeah, that's what we need to be talking about. There was a there was a post on Twitter of like uh, someone whispering and someone else is there. What if the next, what if the next uh, rate move is is not a cut? <laughs> and it's got like oh shit, but the market is totally not pricing that. They're out. gonna force it. I I really think the market's gonna force the next move to be a rate a rate rise. Again, you get to June, the S and P's. I'm making up numbers. Are at 6,500, right? Gold, 65. Gold, gold, gold's at 3,000. You know what I mean? You tell me they're gonna cut rates? There's no fucking way, man. No way. No way. They're gonna be raising rates. No way. I really believe that that's where we're at. The market is going to force. Do you think they'll do it this year? I um, mean, well, yeah. If we get there midsummer, uh, really high on spews and gold, yeah, they'll have to. Should be getting really hot then. Yes, that's right. So that that's that's the premise I'm going with right now. I don't, again, I like it. I don't trade off of any of this. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well aware, well aware that I could be. Completely this is right. just two two dickheads talking here. No, it's just but... well aware that I could I could, I could be <laughs> wrong and all that. But I'm just I'm just trying to come up with a contrarian take to the macro view. And one that the market agrees with, and that's one. No, that, I really that's like one that. that. The market is agreeing with, right? And I nobody's totally prepared that. for that. I mean, the only way to get a good risk reward on your side, right, is to come up with a contrarian view. It might be right, it might be wrong, but yeah, you know, go with consensus, and consensus is right. There's not a lot of money to be made in that, right? No. That's
this is already discounted into the market. So where are you making money on that? You know, you have to catch the other thing. So yeah, that's what, that's what I think, man. I love it. That's I love I it. Think. I think that's the way to be approaching this from here. Let the well, market. I, I know force, you. I know you. The Fed to raise rates. I I know you. You were gonna have that view because you did watch my weekly look ahead video, of course, where uh, I talked about Carson Flock saying that there's not gonna be any rate cuts this year. I mean, obviously, I watched that video. <laughs> everybody watches that video. It's the first thing everybody, everybody man. Jesus, the first everybody. thing everybody I know does. <laughs> They should. As they should. Most important they thing should. Okay. You know, it's funny. I mean, I, I, I love that idea that they're actually going to hike rates this year. That would be incredible. Could you imagine? Do you imagine? Man, yes. I, I could easily, would just I could come off. imagine. That would be like an FOMC where the markets just go, like, you're talking 5% down. I mean, it's not going to come out of nowhere. You know what I mean? You're going to have to get the numbers behind it, right? You're going to have to get these strong employment numbers, and you're going to have to get strong whatever, and blah, 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 you know? Um, Downtick on GDP. Or, oh, sorry, no, sorry. Sorry, that's a different no, narrative. GDP, yeah. No. Uh, yeah, it's going to have to be run as super hot, right? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's yeah. really... Uh... But then you've got... Because you, you have Powell where he's like... He's looking at all the indicators on the dashboard and he's like, wow, this is going really good. So we're going to have to stay data dependent if we're going to cut rates. Uh, and I so think he's far. being personally, I think he's being, I, I have no idea. You know what I mean? I'm not in his mind, but I think that uh, they don't want to, uh, he says enough where he's not lying. He, he's saying, look, we're data dependent because he's seen that the data is stronger than he needs it to be to cut. Right. Clearly. Yeah. But he doesn't want to signal the fact that, you know, that they're raising because I, th I think he, he's aware of, uh, you know, what, you know, the problems under the surface. What happens to, you know, all these things if they have to raise rates? What happens to the commercial real estate thing if they have to raise rates? What happens to, you know? Oh, uh, they get eviscerated, man. Well, that's, that's what I mean. Oh, so so I think he wants before. to avoid people, you know. Well, yeah, with... that's the thing because these bankers normally give you a bit of forward guidance, right? They they go good cop, bad cop, and then you end up with a narrative where, hold on a second, people are going, well, maybe the Fed are actually going to tighten a bit here, right? Um, you know, and and then it kind of comes into an apprehensive FOMC meeting where you're like, oh, there's like you know an outside probability of a hike, like sixteen percent probability of a hike or eight percent probability, and then bam, comes out with a hike. But like, yeah, K KRE index, all those banks would get smoked. You would think, you would certainly bonds, think, man. Certainly think so. So, I, uh, you know, all that real estate, oh, it'd be beautiful. So many people would be absolutely like throwing their keys at the bank because they're having a hard time right now. But if you imagine the rates went to like six, six and a half, yes, it'd be wonderful. <laughs> That'd be so good. <laughs> and then Biden coming in for election when like the bank the banks would be going to an absolute shit show. Yeah, I think people need to uh you know, be ready for uh for the orange man to be the, the leader of the free world once again and, and however many months away we are now. Eight months. Leader of the free world. Yeah. You know, I I don't think that uh that's uh, that's uh, a given man that's uh, a given yeah. and if he doesn't get it and like on these current approval ratings for biden if they announce trump not as the winner on 22nd november yeah there's gonna I've be said this so many happy. times now there's gonna, gonna be right i was just down in florida and um they have bike week in daytona this week and okay like, huh bike week B bike week yeah so it's like you know all the basically, motorbike yeah everybody that owns a harley davidson Oh yeah, comes to Daytona for two weeks and right does what people that are into Harley Davidsons do, right? You were partying with biker gangs down in Daytona. You know, it's funny you say biker gangs, but the truth is, I'd say like seventy. We, like the perfect example is we saw one guy drive by and he had his Harley on a uh, a trailer. Yeah, and and it was being uh, driven. By, the trailer was attached to a uh, you know brand new fucking Range Rover. <laughs> <laughs> So I think that's probably makes up 
more than half of the bike week gang now, right? Or the the weekend warrior, you know, lawyers guys who who own a yeah, horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there were, uh, I got to say, it, it's Americana at its best, man. I went and I walked around one night for about an hour down where all the happenings were going on. You know, they Yeah. got some, some bands and stuff, and, you know, everybody parks their bikes, and I mean... It... I can, I can see you in that scene, man. I can Oh, see yeah. you with a Oh, big yeah. hog, Hardy That's, Davidson that, at that's the back. my I thing. can see It's it. so funny, because I'm walking by... This is a little bit inappropriate for our forum, but I'm walking by. You know, there's some crazy, you know, females walking around wearing some crazy outfits and all that, and... I'd I look say. at him. I look at him, and I'm just like, you know, something, man. I couldn't even. The truth is, at my age and my health and all that stuff, I, I couldn't even help this girl out, man. You know what I mean? It would all be done, and she'd be looking for more, and I'd be asleep. So, it's a sad Past part. your bedtime. It's a sad part. Yeah, exactly. It's a sad part of where I am in life. You know, 15 years ago, maybe, but now, you know, I couldn't even help her out. Anyway, um, but yeah, it's uh, it's Americana. What about oh well, hold on. what about Miss Shapiro? She didn't she didn't want to get into some biker girl gear and got into the conference. No, it's not really her uh, her scene, really. Um, she'd go just to, she'd be up for it if it meant that I would like take her out to dinner and go out and do something. She'd go anywhere for that at this point. <laughs> You got to take her out for a meal. But yeah, man. she didn't come down. She was working, and we were just—I was just down there for two days to get as much of these uh, this video work done as I as I could. Um, but anyway, you know, the point is, I just I, there wasn't a person within you know a hundred miles of that place that was voting for Joe Biden. I can tell you that. Yeah, I know. If people I, yeah. really want to understand, to me, Americana man, you you, you got to go to Bike Week, dude. I'd love to go to Bike Week. Sounds awesome. That's really where I think you can understand what America's all about, personally. Everybody's wearing their, you know, T-shirts and, you know. It's And either... those bandanas, American flag bandanas. Yes. Lots of that going on in big, I took a like, picture. I took a beard. picture of this, uh, this T-shirt shop. I got to find it because it's the best. These are the T-shirts that were hanging out in front of the shop. It's one of Trump. Miss me yet? Trump 2024. Then they have one, an American flag. With a soldier on his knee, you know, with a with a gun, it says this is how Americans take a knee. <laughs> But point thirty eight here. This says all faster than dialing nine one one. Point thirty eight nine millimeter. Point forty. Point forty five. Jesus Christ, man! Give it up with the guns, America. Here's a message to America: Give up the bloody If this guns. This flag offends you. I'll help you move back. <laughs> oh no i'll help you pack if this flag offends you i'll help you pack so my point is this is uh this is real america man it's not what you fucking read in, in wall street reports and you got to go you got to go to bike week just to see it once so we have uh some family out in uh, missouri from my partner's side shelby's side and uh her uncle and uh her family out there raised uh competition rodeo bulls oh cool and uh cousin rides uh rides bulls he's a competition uh rodeo cowboy so it's proper proper cowboy. shit kicking cowboy stuff going on and uh it was over there last summer i think it was and i would go into one of the barns and there's like not kidding you there was a flag that was like the size of A small cottage on the back wall and it just said fuck biden yeah on the back i have a guy right down the road from me <laughs> to get to my house on route one i have to drive about a quarter mile past my house and take the little u-turn to get to the other side right and right when i take that u-turn to get the other side, there's a guy that lives right there on route one he's got some pretty decent land and a big fence up and his whole fence is peppered with with that stuff Oh, yeah. Fuck, fuck Biden, impeach Biden, kill Biden, fucking January 6th, you know, the election was rigged, all that stuff. Right, I mean, guys, right down from my house, man, I love him. I, I never, wow. I don't know who he is, but I'm scared to go in there because he'll fucking shoot me. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I, I got a feeling that guy probably, like has, would. He probably has some guns, I'm thinking. He's... Yeah, well, I think all of that's going to come out of the woodwork after you know after this election. If Trump doesn't get it, man, I, those guys are going to take those guns out of the cabinet and they're going to be out there and go it's going to be wild. Tell you the truth, I go both ways on that.
Uh, I do think that 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 is something people need to think about, right? You know what I mean? That and even if they took him off the ballot or something like that, right? Imagine what would happen, right? Um, well, they've tried to do that in I don't know five or six states already, haven't they? Yeah, but they lost. Yeah, they lost. Yeah, yeah he's that, lost. still on. But whatever, something screw up goes on. Are these guys really going to take their guns out and go nuts? On the one hand, you want to believe yes that they will. We'll get a nice civil war. But on the other hand, I feel like people fucking talk shit, man. But at the end of the day, you know, do they really want to be thrown in jail? You know, they got their family. They got their job. You know what I mean? And uh, they got their business. They got their Harley. They got whatever they want. And do they really want to stand up and get thrown in jail? I, I don't I don't really believe they do. Um, But I hope they do. Well, you could have said that about the riots on in, in the Capitol, the storming of the Capitol on January 6th, right? You know, they're like. I don't know. Like that, I know a guy who went to that, and he didn't go into the Capitol or anything, but he was there that day, and, and he, this is where I got this idea, because I called him up. I said, dude, if they take this guy off the ballot, are you, are you going to Washington? You know, what are we doing? I'm going with you, bro. Let's go, you know? And this is a guy who drives around in my old town, which is a, a very Democrat-leaning town, I would say, at the least, where I used to live. And he drives around in his truck with his Trump, you know, flags on the back. And he, he, used to <laughs> put, he used to put all kinds of different messages on the back of his truck, okay? Yeah. Fuck Biden and all that. And he stopped doing it, which I didn't know. But he told me he stopped doing it. And this is a tough guy, dude. You know what I mean? You talk about a very, very strong guy, um, very tough guy who doesn't take a lot of shit and has built himself a hell of a business over the years. Um, and uh, he's like, look, man. He goes, my wife made me to take all that shit down. He goes, I don't need the fucking IRS coming over here and auditing me. I don't need, you know. Well, there you go, yeah. You know? Yeah, uh, yeah. And, you know, he believes very strongly in the conspiracy against anything Trump that's out there. He believes very strongly that the reason that these people are so against him is because they are scared shit of what Trump is going to expose about them and about everything. Um which I'm not here to doubt. I'm always good for a, I'm always up for a good government conspiracy theory. Yeah, um, me too. Throw it out there. Yeah, and he's got all these things about how the January thing was three quarters bullshit and all that. And he was there too. But the point is, he uh, you know, just hearing him say that, you know what I mean? He took his Trump stuff because he doesn't want the IRA. You know, I feel like at the end of the day, that's probably most people, right? You you, you talk, you talk, you talk. But when it yeah. comes to it, you know, you don't really want to go to jail. No, people, you know, there's That's a certain, there's a certain point where you kind of go, you know what, I'm I'm risking my way of life, and it's not just my way of life, it's my family's way of life. And, you know, why do I need to, you know, stick my head over the, you know, right over, over the parapet or whatever for that? Right. You know? Right. I mean, we've all seen things, you know, guys. Just let everything people unfold. Who, people who talk tough, you know, never do shit, right? It's the quiet ones you got to watch out for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. having said that, you know, I don't know, 50,000 bikers showing up in D.C. with their fucking shotguns, it would be an interesting, uh, it would make for some interesting stuff, man. Well, it's not the bikers, it's the good old boys. Uh, well, Isn't that yeah, what they're, they're called? All, yeah, all they're all guys? bikers, too. Yeah, bikers, good old yeah. boys, whoever, right? Yeah. Uh, showing up in D.C. with their shotguns, I, I think it would be uh, it would be a very interesting thing to watch. Oh, definitely. Um, that so movie's much. coming out soon. Uh, to Civil to War. That. Have you seen the trailers for that? No, but I'm ready. It looks good. Looks like a good movie. Looks like it's on point for where things are at. So I'm, I'm ready for it. So whatever, we'll, we'll see. I don't really think that that's going to happen, but you got to certainly keep it in mind. But I, I think Trump's going to win anyway, so none of that will ever have to happen. Yeah, I, I don't think you can get any money on it as well. I think he's like the bookies have him pretty tight, tightly priced for it too. So, yeah, yeah, so it's not, nothing to be done. Like first time, Randy. I just gotten... finished that freaking latest Dahlia book. I read like the first half of it a few months ago, and I, I, I put it down. And I just finished it on the plane to Florida. Man, you want to read fucking a scary one? Read that one. Oh yeah, I've 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 listened to the audio version of that. Well, I tend to fall asleep when I listen to the books. Yeah, it's a little dry, but um, you um, know, it, it just talks about these cycles, both economic and political cycles across history. But I have to say the one one other thing I got out of it is I get it. Those cycles, I believe very much in the cycle he's talking about. But if you look at it, 
and really looked at the charts and what I was doing and really looked at the times. It was like, okay, so this is what happened, and the society peaked, and the Brit you know, and British pound crashed, right? Yeah, and then the Dutch took over or whatever. Yeah. Well, it was the Dutch first and then the British, right? <laughs> Sorry, did, who came British. after the Brits? Was it the Spanish? No. After the Brits was the Americans. Oh, the Americans. But if you look at the chart, it's like, okay, so, you know, here's this measurement, and, okay, British society peaked here, and then the pound crashed. But the crown crashed, you know, 30 years later. You know what I mean? Like, he's looking at 200-year cycles, you know? So, like, that doesn't really help me as a trader very much. Well. If I believe American society has peaked. You're not reading that book to be a better fucking trader, man. You joke me. Yes, I am. I'm reading it. What? To... No way. Who's was reading that book to be a better trader. Like, well, okay. So, so what I'm saying is you, fine, but you can't trade those economic cycles. Those well, cycles that's, are that's like exactly fucking 30 yeah. years long. That, that's exactly my point. So trying to We need to make money problem. today. No, that, that was exactly my point, but... <laughs> Well, an yeah, the, an interesting book, nevertheless. Well, you should, you've read the fourth turning, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. So it's it's kind of he's kind of same. stealing that concept in a way. Yes, yeah, it's it's the same same concept. I mean, but he he but again, the problem is he's a great marketing machine does, behind does, him. Does it happen now? You know, or does it happen in twenty years? Is what I need to know. <laughs> it's going to happen now. I need to know, but you know. Even if it happens, it could happen in twenty years. So that doesn't help me at all. Yeah, I think. Well, it's like untradeable sort of stuff. I mean, but you know, maybe for I don't know if you're doing if you're if you're doing carry trades and stuff like that, it becomes uh, it becomes a little more interesting. You know, if you're like borrowing at one in Japan and you're you know you're investing it and getting a return of eight in the u.s fantastic you know well maybe it is going to be important for you to realize that actually the rates in japan are going to turn out to be like four percent over the next five years and uh, your return in the u.s is going to go to three you know okay the over five ten year cycle where those guys in carry trades yeah okay maybe that makes a bit more sense but i don't know that's a big it's it's over my head mine too too big for Timmy. Too big for me, man. Yeah, me too. I need to know where Spoo's are going to be in 10 minutes. Where Spoo's going to be in 10 minutes? It's going to be a 51.29. 51.29. Okay. That's where it's going to be in 10 minutes. All right. Uh, gold. Got into a nice gold trade today. Just saw this whip back down to uh, around 21.39. Lovely. Long. Feels like I'm buying it a bit high, but it has to be quite nice. Might get twenty one sixty today. Probably should do actually. Um I have a real problem trading equities when they're this aggressively up. I really do. Everybody I just, does. I feel like yeah, but like so we're doing some day trades here and it just feels like you know, you make an all time high in the prior day. What what can you do with that on a day trade basis? really 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 tough because you're so high you're like i can't buy this thing it's too high i mean how much I, you know maybe it needs to flush a little bit lower and then well, it, gets... it came off yesterday man you got your chance no we were short yesterday okay we were short yesterday but we weren't buying it off of the lows or buying it this morning some of the guys were buying it at 5100 there and i'm sure they're still in that trade uh, most of the guys are selling it at 5121s on the pre-market and seeing if we could get a new low on the week, that didn't happen. Uh, it's still open for getting a new low on the week, though, I'd imagine. Short Dow. Uh, uh, I'm not shorting anything, so. 38.811, short Dow. Near the high on day. I'm not shorting anything, but I, I ain't a day trader, so it's a different conversation, really. Yeah, I, I tend not to day trade oil. I tend to swing trade that. And that's doing very well. Very well. I think we'd do 8150s today. Um, yeah, it's funny. After taking a break from trading, I kind of came back and sat on the desk and I'm just like, I just feel way calmer or something. I just feel like, yeah, it just feels a lot calmer than um, it has before for some reason. MSNBC cuts off Trump's victory speech. It says it's irresponsible to broadcast. <laughs> charmed. Who's charmed? Huh? Trump, Trump, you know, guy oh. with orange, orange hair. Oh, 
I thought he said Charms Victory Street. No. Yeah, but he's got he's he's the primary. He, he's won the primaries now, hasn't he? Yes. Yeah, Haley is out. I mean, I don't know. Was she ever going to get anywhere? Was I ever on uh, the cards? If she ran, she would have had my vote because I only vote for women now. So I would have voted for her just because she was a woman. That's I don't vote across party lines anymore. I, I, I'm totally sexist. If it's a woman, I'll vote for. It's my, my new voting. I'll just vote for the best human being. Who's fit well, that, me too. That's why I vote for a woman. Yeah. I don't think we have any decent... Can so our president went to the hospital there last week. Apparently, it just turned into something quite routine. But uh, he's a national treasure, that man. Michael D. Higgins. So I think we need to talk about continuation in Ireland. Contingencies. And uh, the last time out, it was a complete joke. The candidates they had. So, uh, hopefully, we, we get some decent, strong women in there in the mix. Women, uh, man. We've had, we've had two... Female presidents here in Ireland. Too. Yeah, way to go! It is. I'm I'm on board with that. So, um, what else can you tell me is going on over there? That's it, man. That's it. That's my big thought. Is this thought about the market's going to force the Fed to raise rates? That's the that's the contrarian play to to play. I believe. However, you think you can play that. That's how you play it. Means assets go think, up really until they raise rates. Yeah. Do you think June things will get so hot? I mean, as a guess, sure. If they have to yeah. wait all the way till June, you know what I mean? We'll get data obviously in the meantime, but you know, that will start yeah. to if the, if that's going to be the case, then we will be getting data that will be stronger than expected and people will have to start concluding that that's where we're going. Yeah. But let let's see how it goes, you know? We got unemployment coming out, what, Friday? That's a big one. Yeah. It's going to be hot. You would think so. Be hot. The market's going to love it. One would certainly think that it would be hot. So, um, okay. You got any other stories from the biker gang party? That's it. I was there. I was only there for about half an hour. Just walked around, you know. Right. Serve up all this weird food, and they got these weird bands and shit. They had one band. I didn't go, but I was saw that thing where like they play off it's all classic rock obviously and or country or classic rock type of stuff almond skinnered but the one band oh, yeah. like they like did cover tunes and they dressed up as the bands they were so they do like four or five guns and roses songs they would dress up as guns and roses they did like yeah. four or five queen songs they dress up as queen <laughs> like it must take a lot of time to be fucking changing clothes man just play the songs yeah it sounds like a lot of fun. I went to a biker festival. Oh, I think then. Biker Week would be freaking shitloads of fun. It's all fucking music and beer and food. How bad could it be? I went. I went to a biker fest once then in uh, Wicklow, the county I'm from here. But it was deep, deep into Wicklow in the hills, and they took over this tiny little town that had one pub. And um, well, to cut a long story short, I woke up in a tent. A two man tent with five people <laughs> at about eleven o'clock the next morning. Beautiful. At freezing, freezing cold. Beautiful. Thinking I was gonna die. I went to other big biker fest in, in the States of Sturgis, which I think okay. I, want, I want to say North Dakota, South Dakota, somewhere like that. And it's in the summer. It's one of the biggest summer fests there is. And I was driving across country with my wife and we ran right into it. I mean you can't help it because about Start about 250 miles away. Every vehicle you see on the road is a, is a Harley. And uh, we ended up having to go. So we went and we're sitting at this like restaurant eating lunch. And we're looking at the, um, we're looking at the uh, schedule. And I saw like what had just finished when we were sitting down to eat was the pickle licking contest. The pickle licking contest. Yes. So I'm sitting, yeah, so I'm sitting there with my wife at the rest. I'm going, and I'm, of course, being super loud. I'm going, honey, I'm so proud of you. I can't believe you won the pickle licking contest. I always, <laughs> I always knew you had it in you, honey. I just didn't know that you would bring it out at the right time. Everyone's like, I like looking at us and shit. <laughs> you should get her a trophy. That's my sense of humor for you. A pickle licking trophy. That's yeah. hilarious. What are you doing a pickle licking contest? I'm going to have to YouTube this. I mean, 
I'm sure you could use your imagination, brother. I'm, that's what I'm going to have to YouTube this. Sturgis, the Sturgis Pickle Licking Contest. That's what you would have to YouTube. It. It's probably got to be on there, right? I've been joined by my son here. He wants to know what's going on. <laughs> pickle Licking at the I'm Buffalo gonna, Ship I'm, Sturgis. There is uh, the young PJ Dogan Esquire in the background. I'm going to I'm gonna have to... I'm going to have to go. Here we go. Classy honey, man. man. These are some clues. Cool. Yeah. Very nice, actually. Yeah. It's not just pick a licking. You have to do pick a licking in your bikini, apparently. <laughs> We're going to have to cut the, cut the oh my God. Uh, contest so chat here. Bad. Children Holy present. Shit. All right. Hey, looking at this. This is so bad. I'll, t- <laughs> I'll talk to you again soon, man. All right, brother. Take it easy. All right.